Hello friends, the ICSC Council released its methodology late last night around midnight on the intervening night of 2nd and 3rd July and I think by releasing it around midnight, the ICSC Council wanted to tell the world and the student community in particular that it is burning the midnight oil. It's indeed a bit like this. In fact, uh, like it was demanded in the Bombay High Court by petitioner Arvind Tiwari, the Council has decided to go ahead with the average marks of the best papers that the students had already appeared for in the month of February and March to 2020, pretty much like the CBC has done. However, uh, while the CBC formula seems to be a bit like plain dal, right? Uh, in the ICSC's case, they have complicated the recipe a bit and we will explain that in this video. Uh, but the big question is, is the food going to taste better? Uh, and I would say, along with the recipe, uh, it all depends on how good your ingredients are. And the ingredients in this case are the marks that you have secured in the initial papers plus your internal project oblique practical marks. Let's look at it in detail. Uh, but before that, you need to understand the basic funda of life and that is called karma. Okay, they say you reap as you sow, right? And in this case, it's going to come absolutely true. So if you did the three of the initial six to seven papers really well, your average marks will really shoot up. In that case, it would mean that you have hit the jackpot as far as the pending paper marks are also concerned. But even if you did not do them very well, your marks for the pending papers will be slightly more than what you got in the papers that you took before the 19th of March when the examination process was suspended, right? And later in the video, what I will do is I will demonstrate this in formula, I will apply this formula to Tejaswini's marks because she passed out in 2019 ICSC uh, and see and compare them against the actual marks that she scored in the pending papers, okay? So that you get an idea about how it may actually work just to take an example of a student, okay? Now, if you look at the ICSC circular, which I presume all of you would have, read it many times over, it's not an easy document to understand. They're basically taking three components into account. The average of a candidate's best three papers marks in the board examination and that is mentioned as A, which means the average of the best three percentage marks obtained among the papers for which the candidate appeared before the 18th of March. What it does is it ensures that you are being marked on the basis of your own performance. Okay, so how you did is going to determine how much you will get in the pending papers. Okay, the second component is the internal assessment marks which the candidate scored in those papers for which he has already appeared like mathematics, physics, chemistry, etc. The third component is the percentage of marks obtained by the candidate in the internal assessment of the papers not yet completed. Okay, and this has been taken as a percentage as part of the formula. The ICC Council says that Many statisticians have worked on devising this formula uh, and therefore the internals have become a very important component that will actually help in spiking your marks, increasing your marks because most schools and I can tell you this from experience and from what I've learned from different schools, they generally do not give, of course in one of the examples they have given an example of 15 marks out of 20 in internals but general range is between 16 to 20 because schools obviously want to help their students. So basically what these three components do is two things. They assess you on the basis of your performance so far uh, as well as your performance in the internal examinations where also you would have put your best foot forward knowing fully well that these 20 marks will count in the uh, final board examination marks, right? The fact that the pre-board examination marks were not taken into account because students either do not take the pre-board examinations for various reasons or are not at their absolute best in the pre-board examinations, right? So I think the council has done the right thing by not taking the pre-board examination marks into account, okay? They have assessed you on the basis of your performance in the initial part of the ICSE examination schedule. Number two, the formula has been arrived at according to the ICSC note by analyzing past board exam data from 2015 onwards. And as I said, various statisticians have worked on this formula. Now the proof of the eating 
no the proof of the pudding is in the eating right so how student friendly the formula is you will know only when you apply the formula to your own marks right so how the formula has been arrived at by these eminent people we do not know that seems to be a trademark secret just like most chefs will not disclose their recipe uh, the icsc council has not also disclosed how they arrived at this formula except to say this is the formula which we have applied okay and they have demonstrated is it using different examples and you can see those examples on the cisc website let's take the first example a student whose average marks of the best three board papers are 75 on 80 now when you apply this formula you end up with 75 plus 19 marks assuming that he has got 19 marks in the internals and he ends up with 94.3 which is pretty close to what his score in the the average of the first three top papers are okay so he's not gaining much in that sense uh, and this particular student may feel a little aggrieved thinking that I could have scored much more in a biology or a geography okay so there is a cause for a bit of resentment out there not that he has not not that he has done badly but he could have hoped to do a little better okay a student getting an average of 60 plus 17 in internals that is 77 out of 100 will end up scoring 79.4 when you apply this formula so in both these categories that is the excellent and the good it's more or less coming to more or less the same kind of marks but a student with an average of 40 out of 80 plus 15 in internals that is 55 will end up scoring 61 on 100 when you apply this formula so a student scoring less actually scores more than those who score high marks in terms of a percentage increase right this student will end up scoring six marks more than his average his best three average as compared to the student who is getting in the 70 out of 75 on 80 or somebody who is getting a 60 on 80 you get the comparison uh, now many students as i said may feel that this particular formula has harmed them so what i will do is i will apply the same formula to Tejaswini's marks in the 2019 board examinations okay and since I know how much she scored in the pending papers I'll be able to tell you how it would have actually worked out for her in case she was appearing in the 2020 board examinations now of the six papers which were conducted Tejaswini's best three papers would have been English literature where she scored an 100 on 100 that's an 80 on 80 history civics again where she scored an 100 on 100 that's an 80 on 80 and chemistry where she scored 99 so i am presuming it would have been 79 plus 20. now this works to a total of 299 on 100 and apply that it becomes 80 on 80 okay not 75 on 80 on 80 on 80. now if you apply this formula to this marks of tejaswini that is 80 on 80 she would end up getting a cent percent in all the pending papers the biology the geography etc right how accurate is that okay and for computers they have applied a different formula because computers is out of a 100 marks paper okay now uh, how much did she actually score let's look at that in computers they just when got a 100 on 100 but in biology she got 97 on 100 in geography she got 98 on 100 right so in that sense she would have gained a little more by this formula than she actually did in the final examinations a few marks right so it can actually work both ways some students could feel that they could have done better in the pending papers some may have actually lost a few marks if they actually took the examinations but as the board has said if you are not satisfied with your marks you are absolutely free to take the optional examinations whenever they are held whenever the pandemic situation is better whenever the situation is conducive so you can always exercise that option that is available to you as far as the icsc class 10 students are concerned but yes your admission to class 11 immediately will take place on the basis of the marks which will be declared on or around the 15th of july okay so that is as far as the marks methodology which has been announced on the cisc website for icsc class 10 students is concerned isc has a slightly different formula or rather uh, because the marks breakup the internals and the theory marks breakup is a little different but more or less applying the same methodology of taking the average marks and then also adding the internal or the 
practical project marks. So that is as far as the ICSC suspense is over. The suspense is over. Uh, obviously, you cannot come up with a marks methodology which will make everyone happy. There will always be some people who will gain, some people who will lose. But at the end of the day, I think the ICSC Council, despite all the brickbats it has received, has tried to work out something which, though uh, appears very complicated, they say it would be fair to a majority of the students. You can always argue that I could have more than right? So, thank you very much for watching. I hope I have brought some clarity to the understanding of this particular circular. Look at your own marks. Look at which, of the, which are the three best subjects where you could have scored the most. Uh, calculate those marks. You would have a fair idea about how much you would have got in the internals. Apply this formula. You would more or less get an idea about how, much, how many marks you will get in the pending papers. Right? Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Stay safe.